Hello. Welcome to our video lecture for this week. This week we're studying database design. Please remember that this is copyrighted. In this week's um, lecture, I would like to show you how to represent relationships from the English to the diagram using Visio. Some students occasionally have difficulty going from the English to the actual diagram. We want to discuss that in each of the relations, each of the binary relationships this week. First, we want to look at the one-to-one -one relationship, where if you recall, one entity instance is related to at most one other entity instance. Please remember that when the key from one relation is placed in the other, it's known as the foreign key. When we have a one-to-one -one relationship, it doesn't matter which table receives the foreign key. All right, let's look at the employee locker relationship that is defined in your book. Actually, I'm defining it slightly differently than your book so that you may see these English words um, represented in the diagram differently than the English words in your book. Um, in our diagram, every employee is assigned exactly one locker, and a locker may be assigned to no more than one employee. I think in your book, a locker was assigned to exactly one employee. Um, so. Uh, that that will be the difference there and this is a one-to-one -one relationship so let's look at our Visio relation our Visio diagram of this remembering first every employee is exactly assigned exactly one locker I have made our ent entities here for the sake of time and I have cut down on their size again for the sake of time okay now I want to draw the relationship here and I'll drag myself a connector over here Remember, we can simply drag these ends to connect. Okay, and I am going to do the format shape because I want my ends to be a little bit bigger. I'm going to make my sizes jumbo. Now, let's look at the type of ends that we have. An employee can have exactly one locker. That means he can have one locker, and that's all. He always has one locker, and he has no more than one locker. So this end here is just as it needs to be, one and only one. However, we also said that a locker may be assigned to no more than one employee, which means it may not be assigned to an employee, but it may be assigned to one, but that's the most it can be assigned to. This end is incorrect, and we need to correct this end. So, once again, let me show you a little different way to go about it in the format shape um, format shape um, menu. We could go set begin symbol. Okay, it's right now set to zero or more. Okay, and now we want to set it to zero or one. Okay, that also draws the correct shape. That keeps us from having to go all the way through that format um, menu. So either way you want, the format menu does draw the shape out for you. That's the big difference so you can see. Now, what about foreign keys? All right, A foreign key can go in any place we want in a one-to-one, -one, in either entity in a one-to-one. -one. So we could take the employee and put another attribute in here and name it employee ID. Okay. And then we could take that and we could set it as the foreign key on our menu. All right. And that shows that we can connect these two in employee. We can connect it to locker through the locker ID. And that works just fine. Okay. However, in a one-to-one -one relationship, we could also do the same thing with the locker. We could call this locker employee ID. And we could set the foreign key on it. And there we go. It also will be able to tell us, okay, through our locker ID, our locker employee ID, we can find the correct employee. So in a one-to-one -one relationship, it doesn't matter. Thank you for attention. We'll look at one-to-many relationships in the next segment.
Hello, welcome to the second segment of our video lecture for this week on database design. Please remember that this is copyrighted. In this segment we're going to look at one-to-many relationships. Remember that this is when an entity instance can be related to more than one entity instance of another entity. Okay. Um, the foreign key always goes into the many side of the relationship, and we're going to look at why that is in just a moment. The one side is often referred to as the parent. The in or many side is called the child. All right, we're going to look at the item quotation relationship as it is in your book. Each quotation is for exactly one item, and each item may have many quotations. Now, here in Visio, I already have the item and quotation entities drawn up. Again, for the sake of time, I made them much shorter, less many, less attributes than um, in your book. Okay? Now, we want to make our relationship between them. So, I'm going to drag a relationship arrow over here. Okay? And, I'm going to... To connect my ends here to my entities. I'm going to format those in so they're a little bigger. We can see a little bit better what we're looking at here. Okay. Now. All right. We have stated that each quotation is for exactly one item. As we look back in Visio, we see that every quote is for one and only one item. This is the correct prospect symbol. Okay? Now, when we look back to our... Each item may have many quotations. And again, each item may have... May have means it may have many or it may have one or it may have zero. So that's a zero to many. So our relationship symbols are actually right. Now, had our English description said may have, must have at least one quotation, okay, if it said each item must have at least one quotation, that would be a one to many because it must have at least one would be the one. The at least one means it could have more than one, which would be the many, okay? Hopefully that helps a little bit with those translations from English to the diagram. Now, I want to look at the placement of the foreign key, okay? We've said that the foreign key must go on the many side, and let's look at why that is, okay? If we put an attribute here and call it item quote ID, and if we set that as the foreign key, then what that means is item is related to quote through this. So this item is related to the quote with that ID. Unfortunately, that means that this item can only be related to that one quote ID. And that's not how our relationship is set up. Our item can be, can have more than one quote. So it must be able to be related to more than one quote. It must be able to be, um, identified with more than one quote. So one quote ID won't work. That's why we're going to delete this and drag another attribute over here and call that quote item ID. Okay. And now we will set this as the foreign key. And this makes much more sense because now we can relate this quote to this item ID in this instance. In another instance of quote, we can have the same item ID. So that way an item can be related to more than one quote. Okay? Hopefully that will help you keep it straight where you need to place your foreign keys in these diagrams. Thank you for your attention. Hello.
Welcome to our third segment of our video for this week. And in this segment, we are going to cover many-to-many -many relationships and how to represent them on an um, on a crow's foot entity relationship diagram. Okay. Please remember, a many-to-many -many is when we can have many instances of one entity associated with many instances of another entity. Okay. When we want to create this on a diagram, we must create a new table. Okay? This table is called an intersection table. The entity on the diagram is often referred to as an associative entity. Those are two in intersection and associative. Often those words can be used interchangeably. I tend to refer to it as associative. Okay? In this associative entity, we have a composite key that consists of the keys from each of the tables that it connects. Now, let's take a good look at this in Visio and explain a little bit of this, okay? Here we have the um, tables that are shown in your book. Again, I've cut them down somewhat to be able to um, spend a little more time on the tables themselves. First, I want to show you why we can't simply draw a relationship between the student and the class table. We have one student that can take many classes. And we have a class that can be taken by many students. So, why can we not simply connect these like this and change the end symbol to be zero or more? And let me make my shapes a bit larger so that we can look at them a little better. All right, we're going to again go to jumbo on these sizes so we can see them. Okay, why will this not work? All right, if we did this, we would end up with a foreign key in the student ID of class ID, correct? All right, if we did that, if we made, put an attribute here that was the foreign ID that contained the class ID, then this student would be related only to that class ID. Okay, That student would not be related to other class IDs, but a student can take many classes, so we can't put it there. All right? If we were to put the attribute over here to be the foreign key and put it as a student ID, then this class would be related to that student ID, but it would only be related to that one student ID, so it can't work there. It seems counterintuitive since the foreign key goes on the many side with two many sides why couldn't we put it on either one well that's hopefully this illustration shows you why that doesn't work so we create an associative entity here I called it stu class okay my attribute name here for the primary key I am going to call Stu class, stu ID, All right? And then this attribute, I am going to call stu class class ID. I can type that. All right. Now I need to also set this as the primary key. And I'm going to move. I can grab a hold of that line. There we go. Grab that line down there. And all I have here is are those. Okay. Now I must also set these primary keys as the foreign key. First I'm going to get rid of that relationship. All right, now I'm going to set these primary keys as the foreign key. I'm running out of time on this video, so I'm going to conclude this with a short fourth segment, I think. Thank you for your attention. We'll conclude this example in the next segment. Hello. Welcome to the concluding segment of our video for this week. We're going to finish up showing how we create a many-to-many -many relationship using an associative entity. 
You recall in our previous segment, we created the student entity and the class entity with their primary key. They have a many-to-many -many relationship because a student can be in one or more classes and a class can have one or more students. To show this relationship, we created the associative entity stu class, okay, which has student ID and class ID as its primary key. Now we need to also set these two attributes as the foreign key. Again, we do that by simply selecting the attribute and right-clicking and choosing set foreign key from our menu. At this point, we have our foreign key and our primary key as the same two attributes. Now we want to draw our relationship. I have a relationship line here with the ends already enlarged to save a little time. I'm dragging it back up. And I'm going to connect here to my student class. Now to save time, I want to show you a little trick where we don't have to grab a relationship off of the um, shape stencils and drag it over here and reset the ends to be large enough. We can simply right click and copy and then over here we can right click and paste and we have our relationship already with the right sizes. And I'm going to connect here and here. Now I have my associative entity that is creating my many-to-many -many relationship. This is because this stu class, student ID, can only have, can only be related to one instance of student, but our student can be related to multiple instances of stu class. So, student ID 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, could be related to a stu class instance of stu class 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and class ID of 101. Then stu ID 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 can also be related to a stu class ID that has stu class 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 but class ID of 105. And that is how we relate these two same way an instance of class is related to multiple instances of stu class. That's how we get our many-to-many -many relationship through this associative entity. Hopefully this example has made this a little clearer to you. Thank you for your attention and this concludes our video lecture for this week.